In this video, we're introducing a derivative technique called logarithmic differentiation. Now to illustrate why this is necessary, check out this list of examples on the left. In the first example, we have the function f of x equals x squared, and we want the derivative of this thing. And that's just a power function. It's a variable raised to a power, and we follow the power rule for that. We bring down the exponent out in front and subtract one from the original exponent. And there it is, the derivative is 2x. Now in our next example, we have a constant raised to a power. Well, that's an exponential function, and we just recently worked out how to do this. The derivative of 2 to the x is going to be the natural log of that base, so the natural log of 2 multiplied by the original function 2 to the x. But the function in the third example is an entirely new animal. While the first example had a variable raised to a constant, and the second had a constant raised to a variable, this third example has a variable raised to a variable, and we don't have any way of handling that yet. So this is where logarithmic differentiation comes in. So there's the function we're trying to differentiate, y equals x to the x. Again, this is a variable raised to a variable power, and that's kind of the signature of functions that you might want to try this on. And what we're going to do to deal with that problematic exponent is just take the natural log of both sides. So that's not such a big deal. Now we have natural log y equals natural log of x to the x. Now the whole point of doing that is that natural logs have a really nice property with respect to exponents. That x in the exponent can be brought down as a factor out in front. So now ultimately what we want to find is dy dx, the derivative of y with respect to x. And over there on the left hand side, I have a natural log of y. Well, if I differentiate that with respect to x, then the chain rule is going to kick in because that's a function composition. I have the natural log of y, but y is a function of x. So we're going to differentiate both sides with respect to x. And when I apply the chain rule to that left-hand side, I'm going to get the derivative of natural log y with respect to y, then multiplied by the derivative of y with respect to x, which is exactly the thing we're trying to find. And over there on the right-hand side, well, that's a product of two different functions of x, x times natural log x. So we have to use the product rule on that. So again, on the left-hand side, we're using the chain rule. The derivative of natural log y with respect to y, that's 1 over y. But then we have to tack on the derivative of y with respect to x. That's dy dx, and it's precisely what we're looking for. That's just the derivative of the original function. And over on the right-hand side, I've broken this now into two terms because I had to use the product rule. In the first term, I differentiate x, and I leave the natural log function alone, so I get just natural log x. And in the second term, I get x left alone times the derivative of natural log x, which is 1 over x. So those x's are going to cancel and leave me with a plus 1 there. So in the next step, I simplified that right-hand side to natural log of x plus 1, and I multiplied through by y in order to solve for dy dx, which again is the thing we're looking for here. dy dx is the derivative of the original function. So now all we have to do is sub in the definition of y, and we've isolated dy dx and written it entirely in terms of x. So we just found the derivative of this weird function that had the form variable raised to a variable power. So let's check out one more example just to practice this new technique. So in our example, we have sine x raised to the x power. And again, what I recognize here is that I'm dealing with a variable raised to a variable power. So I can't view this thing as a power function or an exponential function. I'm going to have to use logarithmic differentiation. Now it's nice to have a simpler name for this thing rather than f of x, so I'm going to call it y. And we're going to start by applying the natural log to both sides. Again, the whole point of that is that logs have these really nice exponent properties where I can pull that variable exponent out in front. Then I take the derivative of both sides with respect to x. Now with a little practice, you start to shortcut all that action on the left-hand side. The derivative of natural log y with respect to x is the derivative of natural log y with respect to y, then multiplied by the derivative of y with respect to x. And remember, that's just the ordinary chain rule acting on that function of y. Now on the right-hand side, again, we have a product of two functions. The first one is x. The second one is the natural log of sine x. So this splits into two terms. In the first term, we differentiate the x but leave the natural log sine x alone. And in the second term, we leave the x alone, but we differentiate the natural log of sine x. Well, that's a function composition, so we're going to have to use the chain rule again. The derivative of natural log sine x with respect to its argument is just 1 over sine x. 
And then we have to multiply by the derivative of that argument with respect to x, but the derivative of sine is just cosine. So now we're going to multiply both sides by y, and just remember here, the original y was sine x to the x power. So we have sine x to the x power, multiplying natural log of sine x, plus, and I'll clean up this term a little bit, cosine x over sine x is cotangent x. So that last term, we're going to call that x cotangent x. And that's it. If you enjoyed this video, or at least found it useful, check out another one by clicking one of the links on the left, or click the Zach's Lab logo on the right to explore dozens of physics and math playlists. As always, you can leave your questions, comments, and requests in the comments section below, and I'll get back to you within 24 hours. Thanks for watching Zach's Lab, and best of luck on your math and physics journey.